Oh my goodness. I can't believe you. It's almost 7 o'clock and you're still not home. Where on earth are you? I'm sorry, Rebecca. I have to do overtime. So I might be late coming home again today. Don't give me such an obvious lie. What? I'm not lying. You're using work as an excuse, aren't you? Don't you know your position as a wife? No, it's really work. Then, what's your plan for dinner? Don't tell me I should cook my own dinner. Well, I already cooked dinner this morning. It's all in the fridge. Just eat that for dinner. What? Are you giving orders to your mother-in-law? What? No. I'm just telling you that there's dinner for you. I'm really disappointed in you, Taylor. You know what? You don't have to come home today. What? I mean, not just today. You don't have to come home for the rest of your life. Um, what do you mean by that? I've had enough of you. You have failed as my son's wife. Therefore, you will divorce Paul. What? What are you talking about divorce out of nowhere? Listen, do you even realize how much trouble you're causing me and my son? Just think about it. I never thought that way. Put your hand on your heart and ask yourself. You're too focused on your work. You're not fulfilling your duties as a wife at all. I'm not quite sure what you mean by duties as a wife. I'm not neglecting household chores. If I have to work overtime, like today, I prepare dinner in the morning. And I do cleaning and laundry almost every day. That's not the point. What? Even though it's been five years since you got married, you still haven't given us a grandchild. All my friends have grandchildren. Meanwhile, no matter how long we wait, no grandchild is born. Everyone around me boasts about their grandchildren. Do you know how miserable I feel? But... Even Paul loves children. But because of you, he can't become a father no matter how much time passes. It was such a mistake that he married a defective woman like you. Defective? You don't have to say it like that. Well, what else can you call it other than that? Normally, after five years of marriage, it's only natural to have one or two children. Oh, poor Paul. Because of a useless wife, he still can't have his own child. Why do you assume it's my fault? I did undergo tests at the hospital, but they didn't find any signs of me being infertile. You can't rely on that. Even if there's no sign on the test result, the fact remains. I still have no grandchild. Come to think of it, you're an only child, right? Whether it's genetics or something else, I'm pretty sure you are difficult to get pregnant. Um, I don't know how to put it in words. I don't think it's about my genetics. It's just challenging for us as a couple to conceive a child. What do you mean by that? I'm sure you've noticed. Paul has been coming home late a lot lately. We sleep in separate rooms these days. There's just no chance, you know? That's because you're not attractive as a woman. Working aggressively like a man, you're not feminine. Make more effort to be loved by your husband. It's your fault that Paul doesn't sleep with you. So you want to blame everything on me. Anyway, you're useless if you can't have children. Pack up your things and leave our house right away. If you insist, I don't mind leaving. Before that, please let me talk to Paul one last time. 
After all, it's our problem, between me and Paul. No, it's not just a problem between you two. It's a huge family problem. I won't allow any contact with Paul. What? Considering how cunning you are, you're probably trying to manipulate Paul into not divorcing. Are you serious? We can't even have a proper discussion about divorce. If you want to talk to Paul, do it through me. I mean, I don't think there's anything left to discuss anymore. What? Paul is getting remarried soon. Remarried? Yes, because Paul will be a father. No way. That means Paul was cheating on me? Yes, his affair partner got pregnant. So please hurry up and divorce him. Unbelievable. I had a feeling Paul was cheating, but I never imagined he got someone pregnant. Well, ideally, they should have remarried before having children. But we can't change what's already happened. I don't know what to say. I see. If that's the case, I guess there's nothing else I could do. But let me ask you something. Your own son cheated on his wife and got that woman pregnant. Are you okay with welcoming a woman who casually dates married men as your daughter-in-law? Of course! There are things I don't like about it. But as Paul mentioned, his affair partner is apparently a young woman in her early 20s. She'll likely give birth to many grandchildren in the future. Which is much better than a completely useless woman like you who can't have children. Is that so? Then I'll divorce him right away. I've also had enough. Both for Paul and for you. Good. But I won't agree to any property division. What? Of course, I won't give a single penny to that cheater. You're so greedy. You've wasted five years of Paul's life. You should feel sorry for that. Plus, Paul is going to have a child soon. Raising a child costs a lot of money. Yet you have no empathy? How selfish can you be? That's none of my business. Oh my goodness. What a cold-hearted person. I'll have my lawyer contact Paul. So please tell Paul to cooperate. Well, whatever. You'll live a lonely life without ever having children. So out of pity, I'll let you do whatever you want. But please never come near Paul again. Don't come back saying you're lonely and want to get back together with him. Don't worry. I never want to see the face of the scumbag who betrayed me. Oh, God. You're still disrespectful to the bitter end. Hey, Taylor. It's been a while since we've talked. I hope you've been doing well. Rebecca? Wow, it's been a while. What do you need this time, huh? Oh, come on. I just wanted to say hello to you. Oh, really? Well, there's no need to do that. We are strangers. You never changed. I reached out to you after seven years, and you still don't know how to respect me. So, what made you contact me? Wait. Don't tell me you contacted me about your son's divorce. What? How did you know? I heard it through rumors. Isn't it the third divorce already? It can't be helped. After all, couples are just two different people. If their values don't match, there's nothing left but divorce. Values, huh? Well, leaving that aside, you contacted me after seven years. Is something going on? I have good news for you. Good news? Yeah, pretty good one. For a miserable single lady like you, 
I've brought you an offer to get back together with my son. What? You can come back to our family. You can remarry Paul again. Remarry? Don't worry. Paul just got divorced recently, so he's single now. Um... Paul married three women, including you. But none of them ended up having children. He's almost 40, right? It seems he's getting tired of it. He started to think maybe he can give up on having children. Oh. I really wanted grandchildren too. But children are a blessing. It can't be helped. But now, I'm worried about my own old age. So Paul and I talked it over. And we decided to give you another chance. Why are you talking like I'm the one who wanted to get back with him? Why not? Aren't you happy that you can get married with him again? Not at all. What? I have no intention of becoming the caregiver for my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law. Being a caregiver? It's not like that. I'm just saying let's be a family again. You're trying to use me. Both you and Paul are getting older. So you're bringing me back to be your housekeeper and caregiver, right? No, I'm not. You really have a messed up personality, don't you? I just realized something. Did you say that Paul still doesn't have any children? I thought after we divorced, he became a father. You have a grandchild, don't you? Actually... Why doesn't he start over with her instead of me? You were happy when she got pregnant, weren't you? There's just a lot of things that happened. He can't get back together with her. Why not? Actually, the child she was carrying wasn't his. Oh, really? That sucks. I can't believe I was completely fooled. She claimed the child was Paul's. But when the child was born, it didn't resemble Paul at all. So just to be sure, we did a DNA test. It confirmed that Paul wasn't the father. And there's more. After we found out that the child wasn't Paul's, she disappeared with the child. She took Paul's cards, cash, and all valuable belongings from the house. She seemed like such a nice lady. I never thought she was capable of cheating and stealing. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> What's so funny about it? You never thought she was a cheater? Did you forget how they started dating? <laughs> well, that's... Paul brought this upon himself. Well, isn't it a good thing he realized early that it wasn't his child? <laughs> you... You really messed up. Anyway, that's how it is. I will welcome you back as Paul's wife. Since you can't have children... You probably won't be able to remarry anyway. <laughs> no, thank you. Huh? Why? I'm offering you a helping hand and you're refusing? There's no reason to refuse. I already have a husband. No way. You married? Yes, I remarried the year after divorcing Paul. Why didn't you tell me? Why do I have to tell you? You're a stranger to me. I thought nobody would marry a woman like you. But I feel sorry for your new husband. Even though he married you, he will never be a father. I have five children, though. What did you say? How is that possible? Oh, I see. I understand. You mean you have five stepchildren. Wow. Having to raise five children who aren't your own? That must be tough for you. No, no, they're all my biological children. You're kidding. Well, when I remarried, I never imagined I'd have five kids. 
Three children a year, then we had twins. Both my husband and I are busy taking care of them every day. <laughs> Why? How? How can you have five children when you're supposed to be infertile? I'm pretty sure I told you about it. I had medical tests done, and there was no sign of me being infertile. But you didn't get pregnant at all with Paul. Yeah, but even so, I quickly got pregnant with my current husband. It proves that I wasn't the reason why I didn't get pregnant, don't you think? Are you trying to say my son is infertile? It's just obvious. He has been with many women before. But none of them ever got pregnant, right? Doesn't that simply prove that something's wrong with Paul? Oh my god. Listen, Rebecca. Your son is probably infertile. No way. Deep down, you had an idea about it, didn't you? But maybe you didn't want to accept that your son was infertile. I don't think he had any tests done. Paul being infertile is impossible. Not being able to have children is just a coincidence. It's definitely not Paul's fault. Then you should get him tested. Um... You believe that he's not infertile, right? Yes. Maybe you're right. I will ask him to get tested. I'll prove that Paul isn't infertile. Alright, good luck. I have to go now. My child started crying. Hey, Taylor. I have something to tell you. What now? You said you have five children, right? Yes. I'd like to adopt one of them. Excuse me? What are you talking about? It was confirmed that Paul was infertile. Ah, so he went for tests right away. He was devastated when he heard the results. Even though he'd already given up on having children. Finding out he was infertile was a huge shock for him. Now he's skipping work and shutting himself in at home. Oh, but why do you want to adopt one of my children? Even though you divorced, you were once part of our family. The children you bore are practically Paul's too. What? No. Just give me one of your children. If we welcome a child in our home, I'm sure Paul will return to his old self. That's such a selfish idea. Even for you, raising five children must be hard, right? I'm trying to lessen your burden, so be grateful. I'll adopt one of them, so give me the smartest, cutest one. My son and I will raise them with care. Are you serious? Have you gone completely insane? How rude. I'm not losing my mind. Hey, if possible, I'd prefer a boy. I'll make him the heir to our family. With five children, surely there's at least one boy, right? Well, actually, all five of them are boys. Wow, that's perfect. Let me have one of them. Boys eat a lot as they grow up. With five of them, the food bill will be huge. Let me help you, Taylor. Even so, I can't just hand over my precious children to you. We have the right to take them. You are insane. I would never give my child up for adoption, especially not to a scumbag like you. Excuse me? What do you mean by scumbag? It means exactly what it means. You ungrateful bastard. How dare you speak like that to your former mother-in-law who took care of you? What? I don't recall ever being taken care of by you. I've managed all the housework while working full-time. If anything, I was the one who took care of you. I've been snubbed a lot by you for not being able to have children. For five years, I've been enduring you and your son. 
What are you bragging about? Fulfilling your duties as a wife was your responsibility. It's a good thing I got away from you too. Thanks to that, I met a kind husband and was blessed with five lovely children. I'm happy every day. Don't you feel like sharing that happiness with us? Not at all. So that's why I don't need your son in my life again. And I would never give my child to you. Oh, please, Taylor. I'm sorry, but I have to go now. I don't want to have any further involvement with you. Wait a moment. You're the only one who can help Paul, you know. Why do I have to be the one to help? Please stop clinging to the ex-wife you kicked out. Don't you have any pride? Please, come back. If not, just give us the children. That's enough. I'm blocking you now. Goodbye. After that conversation, I immediately blocked Rebecca. According to rumors, Rebecca had been asking all relatives about my whereabouts. I heard that she was planning to storm into my house. Since everyone knew Rebecca was an insane person, nobody provided her with information. My ex-husband Paul has been completely depressed and stopped going out since he found out about infertility. He finally quit his job and kept to himself in his room. Since his father has already passed away, it seems that Rebecca is now working part-time to support the family. She had been a housewife for a long time and never worked before, so she seemed to get fired soon after being hired. Now she's doing her best to get a job and support her son in old age. As for me, I'm enjoying happy days with my husband and five children. In the past, I went through some tough times being accused of infertility, but now I'm incredibly happy. From now on, I want to continue living happily with my beloved family.